Hey everyone, today's the day we're launching the Patreon page, so check the link in the description for that. I really didn't like the idea of paying 13% in fees to Patreon, so I decided just to make one tier at $4, and by joining that tier, it gives you access to the Discord, and it also enters your name in the hat one time to win the giveaway at the end of the month. Now, if you want to put your name in the hat more times for the giveaway at the end of the month, I created a Venmo account for the channel and they only charge 2% and I thought that was much better than 13. So if you want to give extra money to the channel and put your name in the hat more times to win, every $2 that you Venmo, the channel will put your name in the hat one more time and you have to be a member to be eligible for the giveaway. So for example, say you're a member and you give the channel $6 through Venmo, you would get one entry for being a member and then three entries for the $6 donation through Venmo. Hope that makes sense. I'm just trying to make it easy for you all while at the same time not having to pay a bunch of fees. And just as kind of a little cherry on top, I don't really expect much to come from this, but I created an Amazon affiliate program. So if you click the link below and buy anything on Amazon within 24 hours, the channel will get a kickback for that. The item that the link will take you to is the protein powder that I use, but you don't have to necessarily buy that item. Any item that you purchase on Amazon will give a little bit back to the channel. Again, I appreciate all of your support and let's get into the video. <laughs> Now a while ago I made a YouTube video talking about Gordon Ryan's system from the mount and since then he's come out with an instructional as well as multiple YouTube videos talking about his approach from top position. Now traditionally from mount we're kind of taught to stay low, get a nice cross face and work your cross collar chokes, your Ezekiel chokes with the gi. Now we have seen Gordon at times do this traditional strategy of getting nice and low, getting a cross face, and going for a no gi Ezekiel choke. But the reality is when you're nice and low with a cross face, you're more vulnerable to your opponent's bridges or kipping escapes. So I think one of the more surprising things about Gordon's strategy from Mount is that he doesn't prioritize the head. You can see Gordon sitting nice and low on his opponent's legs and then starts to work for the cross face. But as soon as his position is compromised, Gordon's priority goes back to the legs, not to the cross face. Only once he has control of the legs does he then start to reach again for the cross face. Gordon here has a nasty cross face and he mounts with that cross face. But once he mounts, his attention goes to picking elbows and making sure he has inside position as opposed to keeping that cross face. If he were to stay low and prioritize that cross face, it would potentially allow his opponent to escape. So this got me thinking, right? Because tradition tells us that when we have a gi, it's good to get nice and low so that we can go for things like cross collar chokes and Ezekiel chokes and use our gi to our advantage. But Gordon comes along and says that in no gi, the head is important, but it shouldn't be your first priority. So is there another position in jujitsu where we can apply this same principle? Where in a gi, it might be a good idea to latch onto the head, where no gi, it might be best for us to eventually work our way to the head, but not prioritize it. The thing that came to mind for me is guard passing because as the top player, if you grab a hold of their lapel and you can control the direction their head is facing, you pretty much own them, right? And it sucks for the person on bottom. And even Nogi, Donaher talks about how half guard is just an awesome passing position because it allows you to separate the upper body from the lower body. You can see Giancarlo here has a nice cross face and he's walking his feet back towards the center line to break that knee elbow connection. Once that knee elbow connection is broken, you can often pass just straight to mount.
but if you're subscribed, we've been talking about Butterfly Half Guard recently. And we've talked about how even if you lose the upper body battle and your opponent gets a cross face on you, you can still use your feet to off balance them and recover your guard. Now in a gi, this is tough. You know, they, they have a very robust grip on your collar and they can go side to side and put constant pressure on you. It's much harder to off balance them with your feet to recover your guard. Now, because this grip is so strong in the gi and offers so much control over their opponent's head, I think a lot of people who have a lot of gi training tend to try to just reach for their opponent's head and jump past their guard, no gi. But the issue is it doesn't offer that much control over your opponent's head because it's easy for them to use their legs to recover their guard. And it's tough because even if you pass their legs, and then let go of that grip on their legs to go for their head, as soon as you let go of that grip, that knee is coming back in to connect with their elbow and they're gonna recover their card. Going for the head a little early can also lead to things like inversions for people recovering their guard, or even worse, can lead to someone underneath you getting double underhooks and entering into attacks. Now a common position in half guard is our opponent props up to their elbow. What makes it difficult for us to get a cross face from half guard is when they use those T-Rex arms, right? And they prevent our hand from getting any sort of meaningful control over their head. But when they're using a power prop, it pretty much eliminates their ability to use those T-Rex arms. So this is a great opportunity to take control of their head and establish a cross face. But again, like we talked about, without a gi for you to hang on to from the top, it's much easier for them to use their legs to off balance you and begin to recover their guard or even worse, go on the attack. And even in an ideal world where we're able to get a cross face and an underhook and begin to work our pass from half guard, if they're disciplined with their knee and elbow position, it's gonna be very hard to secure a pass. So I went back and I looked at this post by John Donaher and I noticed that Gordon doesn't actually have a cross face. He has two underhooks. So if we go back to our study of this power prop position, Instead of taking a cross face, this could be a good time for us to go into that near side underhook. By going for that near side underhook instead of a cross face, it makes us much stickier to our opponents and makes it difficult for them to use their legs to recover their guard. It basically puts us in a body lock style pass where we can then use that to pass the guard and then slowly work our way up to control the head. And much like the gi, it gives us the ability to go side to side with our passing. Now you'll see Gordon Ryan trying to pass Craig Jones's guard. And as soon as Craig gets up on his elbow for that power prop, Gordon uses it as an opportunity to shoot in that near side underhook and go into his body lock passing. Now he takes his time and eventually passes the guard and eventually works his way up to the head, but that is not his priority. Now, as most of you know, Gordon is gonna be releasing a body lock instructional soon. So I'm very much interested to see what he has to say about head control in this instructional. Because my main takeaway from Gordon's mount instructional was that although the head is important, it shouldn't be your priority in the mounted position. And I imagine that principle is all throughout no gi jiu-jitsu.